Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tim Walsh coming to you live from Grand Rapids, Michigan at the Grand Rapids Fire Department Training Center where today we're working with the ASIM class, Active Shooter Incident Management. Active Shooter is a big deal all across the country and fire departments and police departments all across the country are training on this. So I'm going to let you get signed in, let, you, let us know where you're watching from, and we'll bring you around today's tabletop exercise. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Shots fired at the 29th Street Mall, 29th Street Mall, within the Century Boulder Theaters. Shots fired in the Century Boulder Theaters. Uh, I want to let the checklist on one side, in the back from the line, Charlie. Okay. Going in the front door. Message received 101, you're going northbound from Canyon into the front door. What's your call sign? I'll contact one if I can get uh, one more officer with me to enter the front door. Uh, we've got people fleeing out of the front door. I'm going to be contact one. Uh, we're hearing shots from inside the theater. Uh, the theater seems to be one structure by itself. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Welcome back. This is Tim Walsh for the Illinois here. Fire Services to come to you live today from Thank Grand you. Rapids, uh, Michigan. CBS at the Grand Rapids Fire Department Training Center, where we're working with Grand Rapids Police and Fire and additional agencies on Active Shooter Incident Management, or ASIM. As fire departments and police departments across the country know, this is a huge topic. In training together under the NIMS command system, making sure that you have all your T's crossed and your I's dotted are huge. So we're going to follow around this class right now that's doing an actual tabletop of an active shooter incident with real police and fire command personnel from the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. So let me bring in the Associate Director of Command Programs, Jim Moore. He's going to kind of take me around and make sure I have a good understanding of the class along with you. Let us know where you're watching from and tell us any questions that you have because we will answer the questions live here with myself and Chief Moore. Chief? How are you? Good to see you, Chief. I nice see you too, brother. So uh, we've working here with uh, Grand Rapids Police and Fire, as you said, um, to work on active shooter incident management. And the, and the fa fact is we're teaching incident management. We're not worried about tactics of the contact teams. We're not worried about tactics of law enforcement or fire. Uh, what, what, what matters is the incident management part of it. How do we set up the command structure where we can have the students make sure that as they send companies downrange, whether they send the contact teams downrange, the rescue task force downrange, how do they make sure that they manage those resources so we don't have blue on blue firing and we don't put fire and EMS in spots where they can be uh, injured uh, or harmed. But there's two things that are working against us in this exercise. In the real life scenario, there is the active shooter, the active threat himself is we don't care why the person's there, we just need to neutralize that threat. And secondly, the clock's against us. People can only lay on the floor okay, and bleed for so long before they are deceased. So we have to make sure that we have an aggressive but safe attack to make sure that we manage all the resources to take people to definitive care and neutralize the threat. So I remember when I was taking this class, because you had me take the class when we first instituted it here about three years ago, right? and uh, this class is available all across the state of Illinois, grant funded, yes, sir. for any mayor, fire chief, or police chief that wants to ask us to teach that. Um, stop the killing, stop the dying, right, is what I remember in class. So let's right. talk a little bit about that. You talked right. about it specifically, but how important it is for these tactical officers to move in stop that assailant, and then get rescue task forces underneath them. And I think we're going to move to the command board when you're ready here to talk right. about that. Right. Our, our people are really good at neutralizing that threat. They're good at going downrange and, and taking care of the threat. But what we have to do is manage the, the resources so we can coordinate and communicate effectively with them so that they can make sure that everyone is safe. As, as Chief Walsh said, stop the killing, stop the dying. Stop the killing is we need to neutralize the threat. We need to do that in organized fashion. Because when you call for help, mutual aid for law enforcement agencies, wherever you're at in the country, is you'll get a lot of police coming in all at one spot. They all want to help. But we have to make sure it's a coordinated effort. And stop the dying. How do we get the people with definitive care? We can have all sorts of gauze and all sorts of band-aids, but if you're shot between the neck and the navel, we need to get you to definitive care. 
And that's what the Rescue Task Force and that concept is about. We want to make sure that we coordinate those efforts uh, through the Incident Command System. Great, so let's move over to the command board chief and kind of take a look at what the students, the police officers and firefighters are doing to manage this incident. Excellent. 106, I'll be a student. Yeah, thank you. You can kind of hear in the background that Chief Moore and I have radios on. We actually use the radios to show the students, the chief officers and fire chiefs that are here working amongst themselves, how the radio traffic will actually take place during an incident. And as you can see here, we're getting pictures of the board now to kind of show the tactical board. Now the board is really not synonymous with Grand Rapids, Michigan, right? No. It's just a basic board. Talk about the board for me a little bit. The, the board's at 29th Street Mall. And that could be the 29th Street Mall in, in Michigan or in California and Illinois. But the idea is that we all have a mall. We all have some structures along the way. So they're just boxes and lines. Um, the idea here is that we use the poker chips to represent um, fire, we represent law enforcement, we represent the patients. Uh, the patients, when they get shot, they're flipped over, the poker chips are flipped over. They have a triage tag, one for law enforcement, which is the top color, it's either red or green. And they have the uh, bottom for the rescue task force for fire EMS, that's either the red tag, the yellow tag, the green tag, or the black tag. So the the, the command board, or actually the tactical tabletop board that we're looking at now, boss, is invented by C3 Pathways in conjunction a little bit with the Illinois Fire Service Institute. Yep, kind of working with them to get that done. And it's based upon what? What, what, what are the areas of information that they took to create this lecture series and this hands-on evolution? Sure. sure, well, they, they took the, the major components of NIMS, uh, communication, coordination, and resource management. How do we put those together to create an, inf an instant command structure that sets up quickly and that can work to make sure that we manage all those resources that are going downrange? Hey Chief, let's kind of talk about while the camera person's moving around the actual coordination that's going on now between police and fire and the decisions that they're making, which is what we want to really enforce here, right? It's not the actual evolution that's taking place, right. but the conversations that these people are having, that they're going to work together, hopefully never right. in a situation like this, but, but, but to be able to build sets and reps yeah. of what they're doing. Let's talk about that a little bit. So um, right now we have a contact team inside the theater. There are several people that have been shot and injured. Our exercise controller is, is working the dispatch. Um, the gentleman at the, at the, the table is contact one. He's handling the stuff inside. We have the fifth officer that, that arrives who's set up as tactical. That person is a command, that person is a, a supervisor level um, that then manages all those resources that go downrange. We then, with him, put in triage and transport from the EM, fire and EMS side. So we put them together so, as you know, Chief, um, the police radios and fire radios usually don't communicate together. Right. And we put them face to face. So if, if I need, if the law enforcement tactical needs to have uh, a rescue task force, he can look over to you and say, hey, Chief, I need a rescue task force. Here's a safe spot to put them. You can send them downrange. So this information, what we're drilling on today, was invented by people in Florida, West Coast, Texas, the military, based upon real actual shooter events. Right, right. right. And best case practices, what worked, what didn't work, yep. what, what, how to save lives, how to get those people from this incident, have law enforcement secure the area, move the victims out to a tertiary care center, all in with what time frame? Well, we certainly, you know, we want it less than an hour. Right. right. We, we want to neutralize the threat as, as rapid as we can, and we want to get people a definitive care in, in that golden hour. And that's a, a key part to the program is we stop that dying. Right. right. Neutralize the threat. Our law enforcement officers are good at that. Yeah, they are. Right. But we've got to communicate effectively because I want to be safe as we send our rescue task force, our fire EMS personnel, in to get the, uh, the injured. Let's walk over to the staging area because that's kind of a big thing with police officers kind of used for firefighters and fire chiefs to do that. So right. our camera person's already yeah. been over there, but we're gonna take sure. a walk over there. Sure. <laughs> Good, go right there. So as assets start to move in the theater, 
command and control of assets moving in. Uniformed officers, non-uniformed officers, plain clothes dress, civilian officers, and ambulances and fire trucks for rescue task forces is huge. And you can see some of the problems that go along with that. So talk about that for a minute, Richard Boss. So um, one of the challenges that, is that we face is as we want to put people into play, the rescue task force, I need to be able to get law enforcement and I need to be able to get fire together with a order of what's their assignment, what's their boss, uh, who's their boss, what channel are they talking on, um, what's the destination that they're working in, what equipment they need. And I want to send them in one, maybe two vehicles because I don't want to clog up the whole area with, with apparatus. Lessons learned from all the other active shooter events in the country, yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, in, some, in some cases, in those uh, people had to move the people a mile down the road to get them to an ambulance. We can't do that. So we want to put those resources together. We want to coordinate the resources so that when we uh, need an extra contact team, that we can put them together. We have two law. We have two staging managers. One staging manager is for law enforcement because that person talks to law enforcement lingo and has their radio channels. The second uh, staging manager is a fire staging manager. Again, they have the radio channels. They talk the lingo, but they're side by side. As you can see here, they're side by side while they're working on different radios. If they have a problem, I can just reach over and say, "Hey Tim, I need a I need a, a fire crew over here. I need an ambulance over here." So let's talk about just for a minute before we move over to the unified command post how important it is to have a face-to-face -face relationship doing a drill like this when it comes to a real incident we're going to talk to Chief Lindstrom and Chief Lehman from Grand Rapids Police sure. and Fire in a minute but talk about how, how you feel it benefits firefighters and police officers across the country you know that, that's it's a great question because Chief when we partnered with C3 Pathways one of the questions that we had from our leadership development decision-making program was our fire officers, our fire chiefs, were uncomfortable on where they fit. So we partnered with C3 and, and worked on the program here that we have. And right, right behind me, Chief, is if, if we'll, we'll take a walk over there in a second, is, is what we call fluffy. It's triage, tactical, and transport. So I don't have to worry about having dispatch be an inter intermediary for me. Right. If I need if I need police, I'm right next to tactical and I can say, hey, can I send my people in here? Where's my safety cord on? If he needs a rescue task force, he can say, hey, JP, I need a rescue task force. Here's where they need to go. And once they're in there, then I, ha I need to transport them. And I need a secure ambulance exchange point. I can then talk to tactical and say, I need some police over here to secure my ambulance exchange point. So it's a face-to-face. -face. I'm not going through radios. I'm not worried about interoperability. The interoperability happens as we Between work Between human beings yeah. operating in an incident. And I right. think what the great part about this program is, is it's set up for 15 law enforcement officers, 10 fire EMS response personnel, yep. but your instructor cadre mimics that response, right? So this isn't a fire dedicated class. No. This is actually a law enforcement lead class. Right. So we have law enforcement instructors yep. and law enforcement officers are leading this class now. Talk a little bit about that before we talk about unified command here. Well, you know there's the, the credibility factor. If, if, uh, if, if I come in as a fire guy and start to talk about law enforcement stuff, yeah, I haven't lived all their experiences. They haven't lived all the fire experiences. Right. So we make sure that our, our, our team is blended, uh, where we have law enforcement, we have fire, we have EMS, we have emergency management. Um, all of our instructors, we come with, with at least five instructors, and at least two of those will have a discipline of law enforcement, and two will have at least fire, and then we'll add, add additional people in there. But it helps with the credibility, helps with the experience, not only the education, but the experience, and then the, we can talk with the stuff. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what's going on behind us, which is kind of like the unified command post where we have multiple actors from different agencies kind of handling the problem from the top-down aspect now. So right. we, we've neutralized the shooter. Rescue task forces are moving in to remove the victims, to get them to triage, right. and, and then get them hopefully to a trauma center or a tertiary care center. Yep. But command is building out the command board. And right. let's talk a little bit about the intelligence section, which uh -huh. is very important in this dynamic. Sure. So the intelligence section um, will be working for the commander. And that person wants to find out as much as they can about the shooter. What was the intent? Um, how many people are shot? Um, where you know where there might be secondary devices, where there might be a secondary shooter, find out everything they can about that shooter and about that incident. In in addition, uh, the intelligence section is is over the reunification branch. 
something we'll talk about oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, right? Uh, but the reunification branch director works for intelligence, and that becomes a really important part um, to make sure that after the event is over, we've got to get Jimmy back to mommy, and we got to get him back to the to the right people. And we need, as we set up a reunification center, we need to know who's there, right? Who was there? What happened? Tracking victims to hospitals, making sure the families get notified. Right. All the things that fire chiefs and police chiefs normally don't think about are involved in this planning process and this tabletop, so we can get those sets and reps. Yep. Let's move over and talk to uh, Chief Lindstrom and Chief Layman from Grand Rapids Police and Fire. Take a walk with us now, and. Uh, We'll go over and talk to them. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So, Chief Walsh, before we go over and, and talk to the two chiefs, right, right behind you, yeah. is a great visual of Fluffy, right? Yeah, triage, tactical, and transport, which is a huge incident at, the, at a multi-casualty incident, or a huge problem. A absolutely. So here, here we have tactical. Tactical is, is managing all the downrange resources. Right. Right. Next to him, we have triage. He's managing those rescue task force that deploy downrange. He said, we got injured. He tells them how many or gives an estimate. He sends a rescue task force in. Triage does that, and they work for him. He knows where, where the safety cordons are because he's working right next to tactical. Yeah. And right next to him is transport. And transport is working on getting those ambulances needed in order to take the survivors to definitive care. Yeah, something that we didn't talk about, which we're going to talk about now, they all have this document in their hand, which I used as a student. Right. And this comes with the class, and this is actually a free downloadable uh, device from C3 Pathways. They don't charge any money for this. Anybody right. can use it. You get it on your phone, right. your iPhone, or your Android. And let's talk about the checklist. The checklist gives commanders and first due police officers and firefighters a basic overview of what they should do in the ensuing minutes of, a, of an actor shooter incident, right? It gives you five steps, five, you know, five simple steps. What do I do? Um, how do I fit in the command system? What's my call sign? Uh, because if I'm Lincoln 484 in my typical department, uh, it doesn't matter when you're in the incident command system. I need to be um, contact one because people coming in mutual aid don't know my numbers. There she is. Uh, yeah. So we, we have a spot for every one of the positions is on the checklist. On the other side, of the, uh, other side is the box and line charts, the command system, how it actually looks like. And, and that one is helpful as we set up the structure. Yep. And as we work through the class and the students, as, as we brief back, and even if you look in the class here, you're seeing. You're seeing contact one at the table. You're seeing fluffy. You're seeing triage transport and tactical here. You're seeing the, the medical branch and the law enforcement branch over by command, and you're seeing the command post there. Yeah, before we move over and talk to the chiefs, let's talk about how you build this out now. This is just this is bare bones, 5,000 foot overview. Mm -hmm. Not really specific to your city, your locale, but now the fire chiefs and police chiefs and the regional entities sit down and they identify areas where this could happen. Yep. And then you bring in real on-duty personnel and you run through drills to make sure that you have it covered. Talk yep. about how you build out that complex coordinated or actual planned events in your own community as it relates from this class. You said it several times, sets and reps. Right? Yeah. Sitting down, tabletop, and talking about it. We're teaching a way, we're not teaching the way. We're giving you a structure. Right. You've got to come and make it work for your for your jurisdiction. Yeah, and like we said before, this structure is based upon actual shooter events right. all across the country. What worked, what didn't work, and how best to approach it based upon real educators that took a look at it, the FBI, a bunch of other large law enforcement agencies and fire departments that have some skin in the game. Right. So it seems to work well from what we know about it, and we know in fact that it's worked well in communities that have had this training. You're Let's right. move over and talk to Chief Lehman and uh, Chief Lindstrom. You know, Chief, one of the things is, is we walk is um, we talk about working with other agencies. Is this a program endorsed in the state of Illinois um, by Illinois Emergency Management Agency? Um, nationally, um, the checklist that I showed you, that's um, endorsed by the NTOA, the Tactical Officers Association. Um, I let's be the law enforcement standard board in Illinois has endorsed it, Illinois Terrorism Task Force. So we've got all the law enforcement partners, all the fire partners uh, in the state of Illinois on board with it. 
Yeah, so we're very lucky here today to have uh, Fire Chief Layman and Chief of Police Lindstrom here from Grand Rapids uh, PD and Grand Rapids Fire. So they're actually out here taking the class and leading from the front, something that you don't see too often. Uh, gentlemen, please, Chief Layman, let's start with you. Tell me about the benefits of why you're doing this and how you think it will affect the citizens at large here in Grand Rapids. Sure. So it's, uh, first thing is, uh, it's so nice to host the Illinois Fire Sheriff's Institute um, an Equality Training Institution we found it to be, and I'm glad that they were willing to come here to the state of Michigan and to Grand Rapids uh, to put this class on for us. Uh, we, uh, we train at the very basic level with our RTF between police and fire, and, and we're equipped, and so we've got that level going on for our personnel. Uh, but what we were missing was this higher level kind of command level training. And while we know and can dial that into the fire service on the police department side, we we not really we don't really gel that well or, or blend our systems together that well. And so I believe that this type of training right here is uh, is the groundbreaking stuff that we needed in order to really make that flow a lot better. Yeah, Chief Lindstrom, this is a law enforcement event. It's always been a law enforcement event. Anybody tells you any different, they're wrong. Uh, like I said before, I came from a long line of policemen in my family. Tell me about uh, Grand Rapids police involvement and in active shooter training, complex coordinated attacks, kind of the stuff that you're thinking about without giving too many clues, obviously. Yeah, well, kind of what uh, Chief Lennon already said to tackle him. We're really good on training here, and we're good on tactics. We're good, uh, just as fire department is, is very good on EMS response. That uh, on the scene action taking, we train and uh, we do an excellent job, and we're ready. But getting that higher level of how we're going to work together and how the bigger picture is going to look, or the areas for you know reconnecting with families and things like that, that's a piece that's been missing. So having you guys here has been uh, is going to be uh, extremely beneficial to us, and uh, we really appreciate you coming out. That's our pleasure. Uh, we're all about training anywhere we can get training done. So uh, we all started out training officers before we took the positions that we're in. Tomorrow we're going to be talking about the SAVEN program, which is the School Safety and Violent Events uh, Incident Management Program, which ties to the back end of an active shooter incident for a, for a school. And uh, I know that we talked a little bit briefly before we went on camera about how the City of Grand Rapids is going to incorporate what you learn over the next two days for targeted areas within the city and outside the city. Can you talk a little bit about that without being too specific, what, what you think you're going to do as chief officers here in town? Sure. Uh, it's a uh, unique opportunity for us to be able to bring the, the school districts, uh, some of the university systems um, together uh, for tomorrow's class. Um, it's something that we have not done in the past 10 years as far as I understand. Um, it's uh, and to bring them together around a topic that we all see every single day happening around the country. Uh, they, they find the benefit in it. Uh, to have both of uh, our command level uh, folks here to interact with their administrative staffs is really going to be a benefit in that uh, they, they're going to understand what we're going to be doing on their scenes and uh, they're going to understand how they can assist and, and we're, uh, we're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be something that uh, um, is going to be unique uh, that uh, we have not had here in the city um, in, in recent time. Chief Lindstrom, anything to add on Yeah, just to say, you know, having GRPS here, uh, their security leadership here at Grand Valley State University, Grand Rapids Community College, that, that's fantastic. But also, um, I know from law enforcement point of view, I brought my whole training leadership team. So to have them trained up on this and to them, uh, then go out, be able to go out to the private schools, the Catholic schools in the area, and relay that knowledge, it's a tremendous opportunity for us. It is a huge opportunity, and I can't... Uh even begin to think the effort that it took to get everybody here. You have, we talked about it earlier, 14 different universities here in Grand Rapids proper, uh, community and other universities that are involved in this, and all the police officers that protect those campuses, and then you respond to those campuses for fire and EMS emergencies. Uh, tomorrow we're going to get into the saving aspect of this uh, pretty, pretty much in detail, where Chief Lehman had kind of talked about how we're going to involve the school system in this because they need to be involved in it as well. And it's really not something that schools would think about that they need to be involved in, but it's a huge critical aspect to making sure that a horrible event like this goes off with minimal problems. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Central Time. I'll be joined by Chief Lang Layman and Chief uh, Lundstrom again, hopefully if they're not too busy and they're not called out on runs. But for now, this is Tim Walsh coming to you live from Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, with an active shooter incident management course. So we'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Have a great afternoon.
So what's your report for? I'll let them know. Okay. What do you need to recommend? Your box. Yeah, what else is going on? 